Tonight it's the atmosphere of an FA Cup semi-final between Tottenham and Wolves from Hillsborough, Sheffield. Good evening to you. And that semi-final, I can tell you, will go down as one of the most dramatic and controversial in modern FA Cup history. We'll see all the action that matters and also get to the heart of the other semi-final at Villa Park. Jim. Yes, Manchester City beat Ipswich 1-0 in extra time. Tonight we'll ask, will Ipswich end up with nothing? Also, the evident manager Gordon Lee's job is under threat. And also away from the cup, we get on the Golden Goals trail tonight by showing you a preview with the 12 best goals of the season on ITV, and that's action not to be missed. But now that FA Cup semi-final between Spurs and Wolves from Hillsborough, the game was covered by Yorkshire Television, our commentator Martin Tyler. And here's Steve Perriman at the head of the first Tottenham Hotspur side to reach the semi-final of the FA Cup for 14 years. John Richards leads the Wolves team, the majority of whom are no strangers to the special tensions of this round of the competition. And with Mel Eves failing a test on an injured back this morning, Emlyn Hughes steps back into the cup limelight for only his second appearance this year, at the end of a week when John Barnwell has given him a public rebuke for his attitude. Ricky Villa represents something of a gamble for Tottenham, He's had just 45 minutes of first-team football last Saturday since damaging a knee in the third-round tie at Queen's Park Rangers three months ago. Villiers starts the game in preference to Gary Brook, who's the substitute, and the only other place in doubt was in goal, where Emilia Alexic got the vote over a fit again Barry Danes by virtue of being the man in possession. It's only Alexic's seventh first-team game of the season and his first in the Cup since he suffered severe injuries in the third-round replay last year at Manchester United. Eight of this Wolves side froze, to use John Barnwell's description, as losing semi-finalists to Arsenal two years ago. But their Cup experience is much greater since then, and with the introduction of Hughes, six of the starting lineup are in their 30s. And no big cup tie occasion would seem complete these days without Clive Thomas in the middle, just ten days after officiating in the League Cup final replay. So it's Wolves who kick off, ironically on a day when these two sides were scheduled to meet in a league game at Molyneux. Tottenham today in an all-white strip and defending the goal to our left. The conditions nigh on perfect, just a smattering of a breeze. The ground soft underfoot from some rain overnight and this morning, which tailed off at around 11 o'clock. And the call in front of Archibald. So that both goalkeepers have had an important feel in the first 40 seconds. Andy Gray promises to be something of a contrast in styles between the two sides. Wolves very much regarded as a long ball team. It's a hit to the likes of John Richards here and Andy Gray. Tottenham will look for a little more variety in their play. And they're particularly pleased about the rain that will help their touch. Steve Perriman will wear number five, but he's operating at right back. And Tottenham get the free kick, which Willie Carr does not allow them to take. And with a minute and a half gone, Carr is booked. again, touched off by Gray, forward from Jeff Palmer and that's very much in the wall style, Gray trying to bring it down, they've taken a slight deflection off Perriman, but the intentions of Wolves clear. Again, it's switched forward early by Wolves. 
Stokes beaten on the bounce by Palmer. Here's Galvin. Showing pace to get into a good angle and Archibald! Four minutes gone. And Steve Archibald, it's his 25th of the season. But none have been more important, surely. And Tony Galvin making his first inroads into the game, really. But his pace got him to the byline. The pass took out McCall. Archibald stretches out. It's 1-0 to Tottenham. Cut back beautifully by Galvin. And Archibald perfectly placed. who've come up the M1 from London start the game in fine voice here's Hugh Archibald looking to get in behind McCall here Bradshaw's in trouble and just snaps it back as Crooks is following in Paul Bradshaw grateful to get the second chance after dropping it under pressure from Archibald but Archibald with Villar linking up with him and the back heel was aimed for Crooks and this time Carr halts Galvin driving it for Richards making up again with Gray Carr quickly in support foul by Hoddle here's Clark looking for Gray jumping against Hooten down for Hibbert Wolves are level and the scorer congratulates the man who set it up for him the thumbs up from Gray and Hibbert, whose range of play includes such great accuracy in shooting from around the edge of the area, was well placed. Clark set it up originally. Gray guiding it down here and Hibbert threading it left footed right into the corner. a word with the reserve official about supporters who've got onto the pitch behind the goal that Tottenham are defending. That's the problem that Mr Thomas is concerned about. Gray. Carr has men spared to his right, one of whom is Palmer. The Crooks ahead of Invilia had to check to stay on side. Galvin, Hoddle, now Archibald, painting to try the shot himself, then using Ardiles. Finally, the shot coming in from Villa, and there was no one following in from Tottenham. But really hit well by Ricky Villa. Spurs had shown some patience in their build-up. Finally, Villa are accepting the responsibility. Bradshaw couldn't hold it, but it fell kindly for Wolves. Ardiles trying to pick out Galvin. Tottenham, of course, playing there first tie outside London in this year's competition their only away game was against Queen's Park Rangers whereas Wolves have had far more demanding tasks on paper all the way through but here's Hoddle this time 
gets some reward for the appeal for the corner. Just brushing the fingertips of Bradshaw. possession Perima Hoddle playing it in early nice it out for Crocs well it's a link up that really has clicked for Tottenham this season and it nearly restored their lead then the chest touch from Crocs the left foot shot from Archibald of the incident at the other end a moment or two ago with Wayne Clark playing the role of Steve Archibald on that occasion and the referee wants a word now with Kenny Hibbett for a, a word out of turn presumably free kick which might have surprised them and which they might capitalize on here and how did Crooks make out a foot then he did nearly the devastating effect all credit to Paul Bradshaw touch back by Archibald it seemed to be McCall's ball but Crooks got there and it needed the save now Adiles Willie Carr back for Wolves. Miller keeping the pressure on. Might fall here for Hutton. Perryman. Still with Tottenham. Now Ardiles. Back from Oddle. Ardiles goes down. Tottenham players applaud now. The question is, as the free kick is given, is it on the edge? Which it seems to be, rather than a penalty. Ardiles going down there. Brought down by Berry. It's Hoddle who strikes it! who was completely wrong-footed. So, penalty or not, it's irrelevant now. Well, it's his 13th goal of the season. And seven minutes remain in the first half. Diles had a second thought and almost gave Gray an opening. And Tottenham at the moment running their way into trouble. And in the end, Wolves get a free kick as Hutton sent Palmer flying. But it all really stemmed from some overindulgence by Ozzy Ardiles in the last third of, his, of the field from his point of view. with the free kick. Berry making a run. Richards and then Clark couldn't make significant contact. The free kick really spearing in and took them again, not dealing with it decisively. Inside. 
inside the final minute of the first half of Gray. Hughes right in there. Alexic in trouble, a chance for Clark. And then for Carr. And in the end, turned away by Graham Roberts. And Alexic finally regaining his ground. Perhaps the best opening coming for Willie Carr. But Tottenham were all over the place again. Hibbett's corner. Berry! And Gray holds his head. Berry shows his frustration because he knows at least he should have hit the target. A free header. And Galvin's on a run. If Velia can find him. Archibald in the middle. So too is Hoddle and Crooks. And it's defected behind, or almost behind, off Hughes as the whistle is blown for half time. And it's Glenn Hoddle who ensures that his side go off in this FA Cup semi-final, leading at the interval after a half in which, as expected, the attacks have shown far more style and verve than the respected defences have been able to cope with. Steve Archibald putting Tottenham in front, the equaliser for Wolves from Kenny Hibbett, and then Hoddle giving Tottenham the 2-1 advantage at, at half-time. So after a slightly longer than usual half-time interval, Tottenham get the second half underway, playing their 10th semi-final in the FA Cup. For Wolves, it's their 13th such occasion. And here's Crooks, chasing on to the little dink forward from Archibald. again at the back as the ball drops for Wayne Clark and Alexic in the end at about the third attempt and although there's angry reactions from Chris Hewton one could hardly blame John Richards and then Andy Gray going in when suddenly they got a sight of a loose ball Alexic just dropping it for a moment that was enough for Richards to go in on it but the goalkeeper finally claimed it Gray again Richards was looking for Wayne Clark. Got too much angle on the pass. And here's Velia. Brooks luring McCall into the tackle. And Velia gets behind Hughes. Archibald is on the far post from Velia's point of view. And that was an important touch from Palmer. Here's Galvin. Was looking for the far corner. And Crooks may even have hit Ricky Velia. shot from Crooks striking Velia. And Andy Gray has had a word out of turn. To become the second Wolves player to be recorded in Mike Thomas's notebook. forward for Wolves, Graham Richards and here's Hughes Richards checking to the far post Richards, down for Hibbert and he was on the side too and he got behind Spurs Belia's header and again cushioning it back for supporting players Ardiles and Hoddle Crooks Ball from behind, and the notebook is out again. All the nature of the tackle by John McCall, which has left Garth Crooks in some pain.
coming through the man to get the ball. They really haven't shown the attacking verve that they showed in the first half. Again from Carr, Miller's header. There was almost a case of misunderstanding between goalkeeper and defender. But it ended happily for Miliar Alexic, for whom victory today will be a premature celebration for his 30th birthday on Tuesday. from Carr, Hughes has made the run this time, on for Richards, and handball by Hewton, Wayne Clark turns away furiously, Hewton is booked for deliberate handball, and he may well have saved his side, but the incident right on the spot that led to Spurs' second goal, Clark nicking it forward, out snake the right arm. Hughes on the left-hand end of the wall as we look. Always a trying time for referees. Getting the defenders back the required distance. So here goes Hibbett. And there's no action replay. He couldn't keep it down. And it's Wayne Clark who's going to be called off for Norman Bell, it seems. The number four board being held there by the auxiliary official today. Here's Richards. Martinez scurrying and hurrying back. But that will allow Wolves to bring on Bell, who scored four goals in the FA Cup this season. Badly, Wolves need another one from him now. Kenny Hibbett consoling Clark as he is the player pulled off. So Bell will certainly add to the aerial power for Wolves up front. The car's right in there and Gray! Andy Gray hurt in the episode. The early ball from Hibbett giving Gray really something to fight for in his characteristic style, but it was a foot too high. Hibbett. <laughs> Foul by Galvin. So Bell has joined Gray beyond the far post. And Berry is there as well. Sets his bearings and Brooks is in trouble for not retreating the full 10 yards. So another booking. And Brooks has now retreated to pick up Hibbett, leaving Palmer an interrupted view. Bell jumping, and it fell straight to Ardiles. Gray, no strength. It was unfair. Five Thomas just looking for a moment to see whether Wolves had any advantage. And blue for the free kick. So again, Tottenham put five in the wall and pull everyone back behind the ball. This time, Palmer has gone across to join Hughes and Willie Carr. 
it's Carr who chips it, Berry who heads it. And it's squirted away from Emlyn Hughes. And the chance presented itself. And Wolves are thwarted yet again. It was a neatly worked free kick. Hughes making the run and watch him continue. And as Carr chipped it forward, Berry headed it down. Hughes couldn't control it. And in doing that, tried to set it up for Richards and it went behind him. Here's Hibbett, could be Wolves' last throw here. And Clive Thomas has given a penalty. 90 minutes played on the watch. Hibbett gave chase. Hoddle and Perriman going with him. There was the contact. And it seems to me that Tottenham harshly done by it. Archibald booked for arguing. Well, it had looked all up for Wolves, and now they have the chance to take us into extra time. And their penalty record this year is pretty poor. Gray, Richards, Wayne Clark, and Peter Daniel, who's not playing at all, missed from the spot. Amelia Alexic. To try and protect a place in the final for Tottenham. Willie Carr to try and save the day for Wolves and take us to the extra 30 minutes, which he does. Tottenham have got him into the game. Aldiles. Hoddle. And trying to catch Bradshaw as he was moving out of his line. Well, Glenn Hoddle must have thought the honour had fallen to him of the winning goal in the semi-final. Just a hit and hope from McCall. look about a pass this time it was huddled but it really has applied to several players in this first period of extra time Hibbert now Hughes still life in his legs he 
it again. Came over Richards, and Carr is on the end of it as Perriman rather hooked it out blindly into the sort of area that Andy Gray would have been trying to play the ball, but the whistle when it goes is for the end of the first period of extra time. And the score remains level. Tottenham Hotspur 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. So we're into the final 15 minutes. Richards, and one wonders now whether the players will be just a little tentative about making a mistake. Whether perhaps it might be a case of what we have, we hold. The Tottenham fans showing their disapproval of a foul right in front of them by John McCall on Garth Crooks. And McCall blatantly late. Meanwhile, Gary Brook, after several false alarms, is waiting to be called on. And it is Ricky Villa who has done well really to last for 90 minutes, let alone 105 minutes after his long layoff. Villa comes off and the 20-year-old Gary Brook gets a warming cheer. Now Galvin. And he slipped Palmer again. And gets good depth into the cross. Brook jumping. Hoddle hitting it. And it may even have taken a deflection. And it was a brilliant save from Bradshaw. Set up by Galvin, who not for the first time this afternoon slipped Jeff Palmer. Brook was in there jumping, and it finally came down for Hoddle. And brilliant reflexes from Bradshaw. Bray runs, but runs in vain, and Clive Thomas will, I suppose, be remembered as the central figure of this FA Cup semi-final. The penalty award in the last minute of normal time, giving Wolves a lifeline allowing Willie Carr to keep his side's hopes alive and even extra time can't drive a wedge between them. So it's a replay at Highbury on Wednesday night and a final score, Tottenham Hotspur 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. Well, as Martin said, the replay moves on to Highbury on Wednesday night, but of course you're never going to convince the Spurs supporters that there should be a replay at all. They'll argue that it was never a penalty in the last seconds of normal time, and as you saw, the Spurs players themselves were incensed by that decision, and maybe that was the reason that the Spurs manager, Keith Birkinshaw, refused to allow them to face the cameras afterwards, but he certainly made his views clear. But first, let's talk to the Wolves player who was directly involved, Kenny Hibbett, the man adjudged to have been fouled by Glenn Hoddle. Kenny Wu's progress in the Cup this season has been characterised by dramatic moments and coming from behind when people have written you off. But what were your thoughts when you got the ball in the last minute of normal time there? Well, uh, the first thing I thought was getting the box with the ball because I seen Perryman and another defender coming towards me and I just put the ball forward between them and um, hoping I was going to get there. But I realised that the boy on my left side was going to poke his foot there. Glenn Hoddle. And they, yeah, I think it was Glenn, and uh, I just lost my balance and fell over his foot in there. Yeah. But it does look there as though Glenn Hoddle played the ball. I think he did, yes, but uh, as I said, the referee might not have been in a position to see him touch the ball. What were, your, what were your thoughts here? I thought after the first half where our dealers got a free kick, which was very questionable, to say the least on the edge, we felt that anybody getting into the box had a chance of getting a penalty. And we kept saying, drive into the box, drive into the box, because there's, there's the, uh, the possibility that the referee, who's only a human being, might just uh, match the thing up. And of course, that's what happened. Keith, I suppose this will always go down as the match that you believe you should have won 2 1. Well, I thought that we had done. And uh, when there's only a few seconds to go, um, and then there's a penalty against you, then it's a little bit of a, a shattering experience. Well, let's look at that penalty. What was your view of it? 
Well, from where I was, I had about a million bobbies stood in front of me, and uh, I didn't have that good a view. I thought that Glenn had got his foot to the ball early, and then I saw Ke uh, Kenny Hibbert go down, and watching it on the box now, um, I suppose then that uh, Kenny really should be in, uh, in the Olympics in the swimming. It's disappointing, but it's a decision that uh, Clive tends to give at times, and we've got to abide by it and get on with it. I knew it was going to be the last kick of the game as well, so I didn't look. I just looked at our supporters over and stand there, and uh, I heard a thump of the ball, and I heard the lads put their arms up, seen the lads put their arms up, and uh, I knew it was there. There was no way you were going to take it yourself. Well, John came over and said, get up, you're going to take it. I said, you can get there, I'm not, I'm not taking that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let somebody else have it. But, but actually, I had, a, I had a sore groin at the time, you know, and uh, I knew I wasn't capable of taking it. So we had a word with Willie before the game, and I said, if we get a penalty, will you, do you fancy taking it? He said, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, well, we'd had a word before the game, and we'd said that um, Habib had asked, asked me if I fancied taking a penalty, you know. And, uh, and I said, well, we'll see how the game's going. And um, when Habib went down, the referee blew his whistle. I seen Habib wasn't going to get back up, so I thought, he must want me to take it. So I got the ball and, and took it. You went out into the middle as soon as the penalty was scored, which is in fact was the, was extra time. Mm. Did you say anything to the referee then? No. I th uh, the problem for us was that there was two or three of our players that were really angry about it, and uh, we'd got to get them away from Clive, and we'd also get to get, got to get two or three of the players whose heads had dropped at that stage and were feeling sorry for themselves. We got to say, well, come on, we have another half an hour to play, and we must keep battling and, and try and get the win. And because Wolves came from behind, do they have a psychological advantage to no, go into the... I don't the... think so. I don't think there's any psychological advantage. Um, we're a few miles from Tottenham, aren't we? It's home game for us. Well, it was interesting the point mentioned there by Keith Birkinshaw that it was the sort of decision that Clive Thomas tends to make because certainly controversy seems to be following him around. Remembering, of course, those incidents in the last minutes of extra time when Liverpool played West Ham in the League Cup final at Wembley last month. Now, when we asked uh, to interview him after the game, uh, Clive Thomas said, I see no reason to come out. As far as I'm concerned, there's no problem. And indeed, in fairness uh, to a very good referee, you have to say he didn't have the advantage of the camera behind the goal in the slow motion as we did. Just put yourself in his position for a moment. Look at it one more time from the normal angle and normal speed. So now maybe you can see how a mistake was made. But there's no doubt in my mind that there was a mistake. I feel that it wasn't a penalty and it might well cost Spurs a place at Wembley. And incidentally, all tickets for Wednesday's replay are on sale at White Hart Lane tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Coming up next, news of the other semi-final between Ipswich and Manchester City and those golden goals after this break. <laughs>